One of the new features in SeekMonk 0.13 was a set of tools to help you deal with correlation clustering. So this kind of analysis is useful where you have more complex sample structure, such as a time series or dose response curve, something like that. And what it allows you to do is to take a set of probes and find probes which have similar profiles across a set of samples rather than just doing simple pairwise comparisons. In the example I can show here I've got a time series where I have four time points going through and I'm interested in the progress of a particular probe across those time points. When you're doing this kind of analysis it's good to start off by using a small subset of probes that show exaggerated effects and then expand out from that to get the full set that you're interested in. So to start with I'm going to do a simple filter on value differences. I'm not going to care which uh, pairs of uh, conditions have a difference, so I'm just going to compare everything against everything and say I want uh, a difference of 5 between some pair, doesn't matter which pair. That gets me down to a fairly small number of probes now, down to 5,700 probes from an original lot of 600 odd thousand, but hopefully this will get me the most extreme examples of what's going on in the data set from which I can expand. The correlation clustering itself it's fairly simple to run, but it's also fairly computer intensive. So you don't want to run this on hundreds of thousands of probes because it'll take a long time. So preferably you want to get down to a few tens of thousands of probes at most to do this kind of clustering. So to do the clustering, it's simple enough. You do filtering, filter by correlation and by correlation cluster. All you set is the sets that you're interested in, so my time series here the level of correlation you're looking for, so in this case I'm going to go for 0.8, and what's the smallest group that you're interested in seeing. So I'm going to say I want to have at least 100 probes in a group before I'm interested in it. It will then run through your probes and try to find you uh, a set which, or several sets, which are correlated with each other. So you can see here that out of the 5,700 I started with, it managed to put 4,700 of these into a group. Your groups will then appear in your probe list tree down here and I can see that it actually created me 14 groups out of those. Uh, the easiest way to visualize these is with the line graph tool because that's where you're going to see the trends that this tool has actually identified. So if I go to view and line graph and multiple probe lists I can now select all of the lists that I just created and if I normalize this you can now see the line graph for all of these and you can see that I have a set of probes here with quite sort of different profiles to them so some of them are similar but you can see that they're all sort of subtly different uh, they're arranged in size order so the first one you see is the most frequently observed one and then so on to the last one down here which is the one that will be closest to our 100 probe limit having found these you may wish to sort of decide that you want to just follow up some of the probes that are on here uh, let's say I'm going to be interested in this one down here, group 12. Having got my sort of restricted set of probes that show a very exaggerated effect for this, I can now expand that. So if I decide that I want to go back to all probes, not just those showing a high difference, I can use a different clustering tool. So I say filtering, filter by correlation, and filter by probe list correlation. And what that allows me to do now is to select one of the groups that I previously constructed, so in this case group 12, and select a correlation cutoff, so I'm going to say uh, a high correlation cutoff in this case, and what it will do is it will work out an average profile for that group and then try and correlate all of the other probes against that average profile to get me the most complete set of probes that display the same trend. So if I do that, there you go, I've now got instead of my original, what was it, 12 was only well a fairly small number of probes, I now have 82,000 probes which show that trend. And if I want to look at this, I can do a line graph just of that one expanded list now. And if I normalize this, you'll see I now have a very large set of probes, all of which show the same general trend as I saw in uh, list 12. If you have a trend that's unusual in your data set, such that it comes out doesn't come out from the normal correlation clustering because it's uh, fairly indistinct from other sets or because it's only shown in a very small number of probes, instead of doing uh, an automated detection of clusters, you can manually construct your own profile. So if I go to back to my original list, let's go to my original one here, and I can say filter by correlation 
and by manual correlation I can select the time series that I'm interested in there and now I have a profile that I can construct myself so I can just drag these green boxes to say what it is I'm interested in so if I'm interested in something that's specifically down at time point 2 I can make the profile to the shape that I'm interested in run my filter and if I now look at that there are my sets of probes that are specifically down at time point 2. So between these it's a way of quickly managing to filter out related sets of probes from complex data structures.